When you say project, the word Gantt or roadmap quickly follows. Did you know that you can create a Gantt chart natively within Notion? When Henry Gantt invented the Gantt chart, it became synonymous to a project schedule. It had the following features and work breakdown structures. When you look closer into the Gantt chart that's in the works at Notion, you see the following. The Gantt chart is a project view showing you activities across days in a horizontal fashion. This teaser itself does not lay down what the additional functionalities that will accompany the view would be. So with all this ammunition, I set out to create all aspects of the Gantt chart inside of Notion's existing capabilities. I create YouTube videos for you guys every week around Notion. I use this example to create the Gantt chart. In all, you will notice that there are four views that I've created. One is the Gantt chart view. This is a table view. The second is the Gantt calendar view. This is a monthly calendar view and possibly resembles the Gantt chart closest along with the Gantt chart view. The third is the producer view. I use this view mainly to tick off activities to be completed. And four is the engine room view, which provides for a full perspective of all the columns in this table, including the helper columns. Now let me show you how to build out the columns. To ensure that all the core facets of the Gantt chart were captured, I created a master database table. All the views in the table merely take advantage of the views that Notion already has built out. I wanted to get this as close to the Notion timeline view as possible. I follow about 32 steps or activities that are grouped into 7 tasks, from preparation to publishing and review thrown in at the end. So I used the same project workflow to showcase how you can create a Gantt inside of Notion. I started adding the columns relevant to the Gantt. So after the mandatory column that captures the tasks and the activities, I added the start and end date, a days formula column, an overdue formula column that indicated whether the task was overdue or not, and a progress bar column for each of the tasks, seven in total. I created two select property columns called stage and substage so that the main task dropdown for the seven tasks were available in the stage column. The substage column has the same seven tasks but with a grey background for activities. The reason for separate columns was to accommodate for separate filter when I want different views. This was essential also for the formula to work efficiently. When an activity is completed, I needed to take it off. But I didn't want a tick box in the task row and it's not possible with the checkbox property inside of Notion. So I created a select view to select a tick every time I completed an activity. Then I used a relation property I rolled up with the activities into the main tasks as a self-referencing table. This is the same relation property across tables, but you will select the same database table and choose the first option to create the reference. Now you can create two fields which are pretty standard for creating the progress bar, the completed and the goal column. Both of these are number properties. If you want more information on how to create a progress bar, then look for this. There's only one small change that I made to the formula. And that is an if condition to display the content in that column if the stage is the same as the column name. Otherwise, it shows up as a blank. Now that you've inserted all the seven progress bar formulas, go back and change the completed and the goal number properties into roll up columns and link them into this database. Take the activities and link them back to the relevant tasks and use the count not empty for the complete question mark tick box column. This will help you count the number of rows that have been ticked back. Since the rows are already linked, it will count only the relevant activities for that task. Take the goal roll up and do the same thing but instead of count not empty, select count all. So now if you divide the completed by goal, you get exact percentages for completion. Because of the bidirectional linking feature, you will notice that the activities show up the task which it is linked to and the tasks show up the linked activities. 
Since we've used a date range, we can use another roll-up feature where we can select the last date of each task as the due date for the activity. This is just to avoid additional data entry and I just need to enter the seven bands of time. I also created another formula column called DD. This is a short form for due date. This is to take the end date for the task rows alone. If you notice carefully, there are no date ranges for the activity rows. Now I've added another column called days, which calculates the date between the start date and the end date and add a day so that we don't exclude both the beginning and the end dates. For the overdue column, we need to check the following. Are all the activities completed? In which case, this should come up as green. If all the activities are not completed, it's green only if the due date is today or after today. And tomorrow onwards, it needs to turn red as soon as the date changes. Since the timestamp for hours used by Notion ends at 12 a.m. on the due date, it returns overdue even though today is the due date. In order to correct this problem, I have modified the way the code works. I first converted this into a timestamp and then I converted this back by adding one day. Last of all, we add a progress description column that will come in very handy in the calendar view. The progress description column is just a big concat formula that shows the overdue status, the stage and the progress bar in one row. You will see what this does in the next section of the video. So this was the engine room view and now that you have set up this view, you hopefully don't have to come back to this view on a daily basis. Let's add the standard calendar view within the add a view. And this is what you will see. I call this the Gantt calendar. Rather than seeing this view as a long horizontal table, you will see this as a Gantt view every month. The red dot signifies today's date. The task is shown in capital letters. The overdue status is shown by the green dot or the red dot as the case may be. The progress bar and the stage are shown along the same lines. If the task cuts across days, you can visualize this quickly. In this case, you can see that the prep and script are only for July 2. But the edit is across two days and the review is till the end of the month. To show this view, the only thing you need to do is to show the progress description column that you set up earlier and the rest of the columns can remain hidden. We have sorted this on the serial number so that produce comes on top and edit at the bottom. Similar to prep that comes before script. Neat, isn't it? Another neat view is the Gantt chart view, which is a table view. In this view, you will see the tasks, the start and the end date, the number of days, the overdue flag, and the seven progress bars in a Gantt type waterfall fashion. The filter we used is where the stage is not empty. All the other columns are hidden. In the producer view, we sort the serial number in the ascending order and the filter to substage not empty to highlight only the activities and not the rolled up tasks. The only two columns we want here is the default stage substage column to signify the stage and activities combination and the complete select column. So as you progress through the YouTube video, you can just tick off the activities as completed. Are you missing any of the features that you were looking forward to in Gantt? Do mention it below. I can make the Gantt even better with your suggestions. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, do consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.